San Diego Padres eliminated the number one seeded Los Angeles Dodgers. But it doesn't stop there. No, 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 no. It doesn't stop there. The Philadelphia Phillies knocked off the defending World Series champion Atlanta Braves. So we have the San Diego Padres and the Philadelphia Phillies set for this NLCS. A NLCS that I don't think anyone, I don't think any baseball pundit predicted. I can't find any credible baseball pundit that had this matchup. And if you exist, I want you to raise your hand. I want you to put it out there. If maybe you had one of these teams, maybe you had one of these teams, but both. No, if you did, you are Nostradamus. You, you have a crystal ball looking into the future. You are from the future. Because there is no way in hell you told me the Phillies and Padres would be headlining our NLCS this year. I'm shook. I am shook, my friend. Speaking of that, you guys are minus 118, according to FanDuel, to win this series. So Padres World Series? God, there's a lot of stuff going on here. Uh, You want to get too ahead of yourself or... You want to temper expectations again. I know you played it a little coy when we we're talking NLDS, but how are you feeling today? Uh, just all of the emotions have poured out and it's it's a celebration for days. Like it's, uh, I don't know, like Mardi Gras or something like that. I don't know. It's just, it's a celebration of my entire life when it comes to rooting for sports. And uh, yeah, we have to play another series now against the Phillies. And I said coming into the the DS when we did our preview that uh, I didn't make picks for the series and I didn't feel confident about a couple series. But if you had to pin me down, I might have gone over four picking wildcard series. I think I might have taken Cleveland over the Rays, but like pretty much I might have gone over four in picking those. Well, I had the Dodgers, but that was more of an emotional hedge. I had the Braves and I genuinely thought the Braves were going to win. The one thing that brings me solace is I said the team I had the most confidence in was the Astros. And I I will say that I got that one uh, absolutely correct. But the Padres and Phillies being in the NLCS is just kind of ridiculous. And Philadelphia has been fantastic. Like the Padres are very easy to explain how they go from being a team that wins 89 games in the regular season to a team that's now in the CS. Their bullpen has pitched... 17 innings, and until Max Muncy hit a sack fly yesterday, they had allowed zero runs. They went 21 consecutive batters retired in the Dodgers series with their bullpen. And by the way, their eight, nine, and one hitters of Ha Sung Kim, Aaron, uh, Austin Nola, and uh, Trent Grisham have an over a thousand OPS in the postseason so far. So that'll explain. And by the way, Juan Soto has been the unluckiest hitter in baseball in a postseason in three postseasons. His expected batting average and his expected on base percentage are the lowest compared to what it should be uh, in like three postseasons so far. So all of that combined explains how the Padres got there for the Phillies. I think the Phillies just might have been this team and we just kind of ignored them because what do the Phillies do well? They score a lot of runs and their starting pitchers give them quality outings at the top. And they've done exactly that and destroyed the Braves. And the Phillies. So we go back to that video we did dark horse world series favorites. And I mentioned the Phillies mostly because the big storyline of the off season for them is look at what they're doing offensively. You know, you add a Kyle Schwarber, yeah, Nick Castellanos, you're adding some run production to your lineup. It was just going to be a matter of, can they defend? Can they get enough from this rotation? Was Zach Willers given enough at the top? You have Aaron Noah, who's given them some solid performances. And they've been able to kind of piece it together from there. And so that's how the Phillies got here. They just hit a hot streak. And I believe it was around the All-Star break. And they just haven't stopped. And now they finally got Bryce Harper back. And he's hitting some bombs. <laughs> Reese Hoskins also just, God, that one that he had, the bat spike homer. He mm. let... That, that one shook the earth when he put that one in the ground. That was greater than any Gronk spike I've ever seen. And it, it, it just speaks to the heartbeat of Philadelphia. Talk about a great sports city. They were electric. They haven't seen anything like their, this from this Phillies team in years. Probably since the last time when Ryan Howard and Jimmy Rollins and Chase Utley were in town and lighting things up. That was the last time the Philly really could get excited about their baseball team. You signed mm-hmm. Bryce a couple years ago. And to this point, it hadn't really worked out for you. You really hadn't gotten the production that you were looking for when you signed 
Bryce Harper, the chosen son, the man who was leading Sports Illustrated covers at the age of 16. And now you're seeing him in there. And we, we always mention this. Bryce, hell of a postseason performer, but it just never materialized into anything with the Washington Nationals. And now he's putting a team on his back, you know, at least the energy on this team, you know, putting him on his back. And here, here they are, you know, production from a guy like JT Riomoto, who has gotten really hot in the back half of the season. You get a rookie out there like Alex Baum, who is giving them some solid level production as well. They haven't even gotten the best out of like a guy like Bryson Stott. And still they're able to like have a lineup that just each and every outing puts some fear in you. Like when I mentioned in the preview, I had Braves in four. So I got the series wrong ultimately. Right. But I told you this offense will still a game. It just turned out they stole three games just by being that much more dynamic than the Atlanta Braves could have ever planned for. And that's the biggest fear I would say for a Padres fan like yourself is that this lineup is a scary lineup. Top to bottom can really put up run production. You talk about the, it's important that you guys are getting production from the bottom half of your lineup too. Will that carry into this series? If that carries into this series, then we could be in for some exciting slugfest between both teams. I will say the reason I like your Padres a little bit more is I trust the postseason rotation more than I trust the Phillies rotation. I still think that that holds up. Having a guy like uh, you Darvish at the top, the hometown kid, Joe Musgrave. Hell, even Blake's now will give you a solid postseason pr- performance. I-, I don't know what we're going to get consistently from Nola and Willer going into the further October, but uh, hey, got him to NLCS. So it's it's a question of how much more do I want to doubt him? Because I was sleeping on both teams. So it's just like, who should I wake up to first? <laughs> Yeah, I get that. And the Phillies did take care of one thing, which is their bullpen is not the worst in the history of baseball like it was in 2019. They've had terrible bullpens for years and years, and it's not perfect. It's not perfect. Their solution was just to beat the Braves by six runs in every game that they played in the series. Yeah, so don't they give never... them a chance. Just, just yeah. end it, right? <laughs> By the way, their bullpen still messed up. They just had such a gigantic cushion that there was no scenario where the Braves could come back and catch them. Like that, that game, uh, game one, they should have won seven to one and it ended up being seven, six. They were up eight, two in game four. And I think the final score was eight, four at the end of the game. Like they just, the bullpen is a problem for Philly, which is why the starting pitching is going to be important. I will, I will, I'll throw out some love for Thor. Also, he, he might pitch a game three or a game four for Philadelphia as well, which in a long series where from what I can tell, there's only one off day in the entire series. They're going to play seven games in eight days, potentially, if that's how this series plays out. Thor might be needing to get in there and deliver a big start. I got to give Brandon Marsh a shout out too. I I forgot to mention him. He was also, as it turns out, a big addition for this team, you know, adding a guy like Marsh who was struggling on the Angels, which is further proof, by the way, (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Just get anyone out of a Los Angeles Angels uniform and they will flourish. So Brandon Marsh, yeah. congratulations. It's so weird. It's so weird how that works out with the Angels. And it's weird that the Phillies are here because remember, I mean, going into this year, the Phillies had the longest playoff drought in baseball. Into 2020, the Padres and the Marlins both had the two longest playoff droughts and they broke both of them in the pandemic year. So like, We're talking about two teams. I know it feels like the Phillies have semi-recently been to a World Series and won a World Series. Y'all, that was 15 years ago. Wait, wait, wasn't the Mariners the longer drought than the Phillies? Or are you talking NL? I'm talking NL, yes. Yeah, okay. Sorry, just they had the longest playoff drought in the National League, second longest only behind the Mariners, which also got broken this year. Shout out to the Mariners and an 18-inning game with no runs. (sighs) And just Philadelphia is in that interesting place. And again, baseball's weird. Baseball's random. The, the, the odds reflect that it's basically a toss up series. And as a Padres fan, I won't allow myself to get overly excited or set expectations there. <laughs> Cause God, this is just everything beyond my wildest dreams. Not already. even as and the favorite, not even as the favorite, not getting a little confident. I'm just, I'm just excited. That games out one that and chest. Two. I'm just excited that if we go to a game six and a game seven, it will be in San Diego which will be the biggest games in the history of that franchise, which is hard to say given what just happened with the last two games in San Diego. And uh, 
all the all the craziness that comes out of that because like that stadium was like a, a European soccer stadium when they had the rain delay they were singing along the songs everyone made the same joke from Top Gun with Goose and it's just it was excellent it was fantastic to see that and I'm glad game six and seven will be in San Diego if we so come to that place because baseball's random and the odds reflect that this series is going to be a total toss-up and Phillies are a nice little cushion instead of playing a hundred win teams like the Padres have played in every round of the playoffs and somehow I mean they, they they've kind of handily nice beat little every cushion team. nice little cushion he says Philadelphia are you gonna let that stand are you gonna let that Philly, stand that Philadelphia. Means, that's gonna be in quotes in the comment section that one phrase nice little cushion I mean, Philadelphia, the Padres are hosting a playoff series for the first time in, I believe, 30 something years that they've been a a favorite going into a playoff series. I mean, Philadelphia is incredible. Philadelphia's offense is better than the Padres offense. I will say that like it's San. I mean, San Diego's only done this because Ha Sung Kim Trent Grisham, who, by the way, Trent Grisham, who recorded 500 at bats this year, which is obviously a high number to hit because he's such a great defensive player. Second worst batting average in the history of baseball for someone who had 500 at bats. And now all of a sudden he's got a 400 on base percentage and a 1.4 OPS in the playoffs. Austin Nola, who for years has been the worst trade that Preller has made because they gave up Ty France and Andres Munoz, who's an amazing closer for the Mariners. Austin Nola's hitting 400 in the, in the playoffs. Even the worst hitter on the Padres, Jake, or, or for the first four games of the playoffs, Jake Cronenworth, who went 0 for 15 in the Mets series and game one against the Dodgers. He hit a homer in game two in Los Angeles. He hit the game winning RBI double to, to beat the Dodgers. Like even the people who have been slumping have found ways to hit. Uh, but you know you what? Same magic thing words, with the slumping, slumping on the slump buster. Yeah, to bust the slump. I want yeah. slumps on the slump buster. Uh, yeah, no slumps. Jake Cronenworth hitting. Jake Cronenworth getting it done. All these Padres getting it done. Profar's had home runs. The Phillies have kind of been the same thing, except the Phillies, we all knew their offense was ridiculous. Yeah. And I mean, G- when Gene Segura is your eight hitter, you have a really good offense. I just thought that the Braves would be able to overcome that. And I was incorrect. I was correct in suggesting that Nick Cassianos didn't forget how to play baseball too. <laughs> Maybe they got him out of the Ben Simmons house. Maybe that was the key. Uh, all right, guy. Well, well Hey, we got to get a prediction in here, right? I, I know you hedged last time. How you feeling today, man? How you feeling? Are you going to, are you well, going to like last time and say they got swept just out of superstitious sports fandom? Well, I have to respect the curse, right? But now that the curse is broken and the Padres have eliminated the Dodgers in the greatest moment San Diego sports have experienced that feels like winning a championship. I'm going to say Phillies in four. That's, that's kind of my, uh, that's my pick on that one. I think the, the Phillies will win in four and uh, I have no expectations going into this series and I will be an emotionally grounded Padres fan who will enjoy every moment that this opportunity provides for us. And I know I sound like I'm giving a press conference, but that, that is the decision I will have and not put my emotions out there. If they lose only if they win, will I experience the unbridled joy of 20 years of never making the playoffs in my entire childhood. Obviously, I just want a fun October series. We've got a lot of fun this postseason. And I guess between the Philadelphia Phillies and the San Diego Padres, I hope that there's a lot of fun to be had there. Uh, Give me a game seven that will go to the Philadelphia Phillies. I am going to go. I'm going to bank on this offense. I think that the production is there. And I just think that Bryce Harper is going to have his defining October series. I think that this is going to be one of those that's going to go down in history for what's sure to be a Hall of Fame career. But who knows? Manny Machado also came out, I think, his same rookie class. So between those two, that will also be like a nice little battle. I'm here for it. I'm here for it, baseball fans. Are you here for it? Drop below your series prediction in the comments section. Leave a like on the video. Subscribe to the channel and follow us on all of our social medias from Kyle Ledbetter, our resident San Diego Padres fan. From Juju Talk Sports, our San Francisco Giants fan who was disappointed this postseason. (laughs) Stay safe, happy, and healthy. We'll see you on the next one.